It was 12 Federation standard years ago, when the old machines awakened at the edge of our space. They have been relatively dormant since they have been discovered some 400 years ago, only showing activity when someone probed too deeply into their space. By relatively, I mean dead silent until there was an intruder in their space, then every platform, installation, and drone ship would be activated until the transgressors were eliminated. Then, they would immediately return to their slumber. For over 400 years, the galactic community at last simply knew to avoid that space in the stars. They were to be left untouched until someone developed technology capable of overcoming them. By our estimates, the friendly people may have reached that point in the next century, their scientific progress significantly beyond most of us in the Council. But 12 years ago, for reasons unknown, they awoke entirely, and they were out for blood. Whose blood specifically? We don't know. Our best minds are still working to process the bulk of the data files the machines ran on. We do know they came for us first simply because we were the closest to their space. Whether they would have continued to move into your systems had they ended ours, we cannot say with certainty. But that isn't all that important. What was important was to say we were outmatched. The machines that we have record of outnumbered our equivalent forces 113.7 to 1. The only reason we weren't entirely obliterated in the first weeks was because whoever created the machines never equipped them with FTL capability. The fact that they only travelled at .9999C meant that they came in a much more space out fashion. This was especially important as in outright engagements, we were losing an average of 3.76 ships of equivalent class to their one. When the first of our systems were attacked, our leaders immediately sent requests for aid to this Federation Council. We were told it would be put forth for debate on the forum to sit tight. Help was only a vote away. But to get to the vote, it had to pass through three separate subcommittees, be reviewed by a panel of scientific and military advisors, filled out in triplicate, and likely buried in soft peat for three months. After three weeks of desperate defence, and already losing half of the colony worlds in the first system, our first outside help came. And it wasn't from a Federation species. No. Our first aid came from a species who had only cracked FTO a decade ago, and as such were still in the exploratory phase of whether they should be allowed to receive a application for Federation membership. Three weeks into our most desperate struggle in history, a human cargo freighter full of aid supplies and two escorting frigates, who were apparently human mercenaries, arrived in the system. We didn't know at first, but human space is two weeks from that system with their current FTL capabilities. Upon entering our space, the mercenaries immediately requested to be tied into our battle network. Two frigates, who at best were two decades of technology behind our own, was but a drop in the proverbial ocean. Come on, patch them in anyway, and the frigates joined our combat formations. Interesting, without any mention of payment. The freighter, meanwhile, began offloading food, medicine and metals we could use to patch up our ships, and they offered to take aboard a hole full of evacuees to worlds deeper into Federation space. The generosity of a private entity was surprising, but it realistically meant very little in the grand scheme of things. They soon departed with 11,000 women and children to our homeworld. And as the FDR pulse flashed out a system, we again resolved ourselves to being alone again in our fight. Minus two anemic frigates. Then to our surprise, only an hour later another group of human ships entered the system. This time they appeared to be three mining barges hastily refitted into mobile weapons platforms. Half an hour after that, a swarm of 78 personnel craft converted into ragtag fighters patched themselves in. Then shortly after, five more relief freighters jumped into the system. This pattern continued for days in ever-increasing numbers. Retrofitted civilian crafts, freighters and mercenaries flooded into our system, forming ragtag battle groups that immediately jumped into combat. We later determined that the combat lifespan of these early volunteers would only be measured in hours, and still they kept coming. Three days after the first freighter, the first official military ships arrived. Two carriers, six cruisers, a dozen frigates, and 28 corvettes. Two hours later, a fleet double that arrived. Within six hours of the first fleet's arrival, there were over a thousand military combat craft in the system, not including tenders, or 18 ships they had already lost in combat in that time. Humanity has sent over two-thirds of their combined space-capable forces from 11 separate governments in their only two colonized systems. And the various admirals promised more were being fabricated to send the literal billions of volunteers flooding their recruitment centers. Billions. Counselors. Over the course of six years of fighting, the machines humanity sent 1.6 billion men and women across the known galaxy to fight on our front line. 
In the three years before this council was finally ready to take substantial action, the humans had already sacrificed 480 million men and women in defense of my people. By the end of the war, only around 400 million were able to return home. Do you realize the context of this? Of course, you do otherwise. I wouldn't be here. With 1.2 billion deaths, humanity has given up a full 5% of their population. With the sheer tonnage of ships and aid they had sent us, they had effectively bankrupt their peoples. And all they asked of us was that our findings from the machines be shared with them. Humanity was bleeding itself dry to be cannon fodder to give us a chance to destroy the machines. If they hadn't come to our aid in those first three years, we would have lost every system in our possession, and the machines would have likely been engaging friendly space by year two. And all they wanted back was to be included in our research findings. Really, that's what their governments wanted. All humanity wanted was our friendship. Now I stand before this council to oppose a vote for turning human space into a confederate protectorate. Let's, as the humans say, drop the bullshit. This is an indentureship contract. You cowardly, dung heap scavenger bastards saw that humanity equipped itself and decided to litigate them into what is essentially slavery. For once I thank whatever divine powers that be that your bureaucratic Shintag excrement system takes so long to process. That is also why each of you has a Komati pulse rifle pressed in to the back of your heads, courtesy of the time you gave us to prepare this little coup. So why are we sticking our gills so far out for the humans? Tell me. Have any of you heard one of my people say something akin to, blood is thicker than water? Come on, I know you must have at some point. It is actually a shortened, bastardized form of a longer phrase I will get to in a moment. What's remarkable is that both humanity and the Cormati developed a nearly identical phrase along these early lines in our respective histories. The full Cormati version of the phrase is, the blood of the honor bond is thicker than the waters of the spawning pool. I trust the phrase is self-explanatory. Humanity has paid its side of the honor bond in veritable oceans of their blood, their sweat, their wealth, and their tears. And no being brings harm to a Cormani's bond brother without their blood spilt in the river. Now, counsellors, shall we continue with the vote? I'm certain I know the end result. It would be a shame to dye these lovely chambers with so much of your particular shades of red.